So, what do you guys think? I got a nice little change in setup with some lighting in the background now. Anyways, in the last video we covered unit testing, but there's a whole other part of unit testing that's that's very crucial, and it's called mocks. So basically, whenever you're unit testing, you have a small snippet of code, and you shouldn't really rely on anything outside of that snippet of code. And that's where mocks come in, because most code relies on something else. So let's get into it. All right, since we have a way to illustrate things again, we're definitely gonna make use of it. So let's pretend we have a function called from database. And we have a bunch of lines of code that call the database. So if you're trying to unit test this whole function, this is the whole scope of that unit test. Nothing outside of this function should affect the test. And that's where mocks come in. So let's say from database, you obviously need a Firebase, right? So let's say inside this function we are testing, we call a function that calls the database. So during normal operation, this function goes gets a call from the database. But instead of going there, we want it to get cut off and go to our mock database. Now this mock database will override all the functions from here and you get to put in your own returns so you know that the data you're coming in is consistent. So you set your own returns and that's pretty much all there is to mocking so let's show off how you make it work with firebase in a to-do app all right so this is the app we're going to be testing we're going to be testing only this auth file and only three functions so we're going to test the create account function the sign in function and the sign out function now just to show you that it all works with firebase we can log in and here we go. And we can add it to do just like that. And we can restart and it'll retrieve everything from Firebase. So it works with Firebase and we pass in our Firebase authentication here. And that's going to be the thing that we need to mock. Now before we start on the actual unit test, we need to really understand what's going on here. So we get streamed a user from this auth state changes class. This is provided by Firebase and returns a stream anytime your authentication state changes and we're passing it back with using this user. Then we have three functions that we can act upon. We have create account, which you pass an email password, and then you call create user with email and password and Firebase creates that for you. If we have a problem, we catch a message, then same thing with sign in. We pass email password, we have sign in with email and password provided by Firebase. And now sign out. Exactly the same thing. We wait, sign up from Firebase, and that's it. So some key things to think about from these functions. This create user with email and password doesn't directly affect the user state that we get returned from the auth class. This does something to Firebase, and then Firebase sees the reaction and returns in the auth state changes. All right, so hopefully everybody understands this code. Let's get into the actual unit test. So we actually won't be using this emulator anymore because you don't really need to for unit tests, but I'll keep it up just to fill out the window nicely. Then inside here, we have our main. And if you guys remember, there's a setup they can call and also a tear down. So these get called before and after every test. So setup, you can write some functions in here that executes before every test and then tear down, same thing, but after every test. And then checking back to this class, what was the one thing I said we were going to need? This Firebase auth. In order to do anything, we need this authentication. But for us, we're going to be mocking it so it's not calling the actual database. In order to make your life a lot simpler with mocks, you need to add this package called Mokito. This is basically necessary in order to be able to do mocking, or else you're going to have a pretty tough time. So like I said, the thing we need to mock is the authentication class. So we will create a mock auth class. The way you mock it is you need to extend that class with, with a mock. And you'll see we have a library imported, the Mokito library. And then it implements our Firebase auth class. So basically, this says we're mocking our Firebase auth class, and this is the class that will contain all the mocks. So once we have our class defined, we can create an instance of it. And now we will be able to use this for all our tests. 
So our first test, we're going to call emit occurs. So we're going to test that this auth state changes actually emits and we get a user from it. We do that by overriding the function up here. So auth state changes, you just type it out. I'll send you this whole thing. And what we'll need to use is a stream dot from iterable. Now inside here, we're going to iterate over the type of objects it should use. So you saw this should return our user. So what we're going to do is create a mock user as well. So we'll have mock user extends mock implements user. And then here we can return a mock user. So before we get to the actual test case, I want to change this name to mock Firebase auth. Just to make sure we're all clear that this is the Firebase authentication. Our, our class is actually called mock as well. So we're not mocking this class. We're mocking the Firebase auth that we're passing in. So now we can create our instance of our auth class as well. And remember, we have to pass in an authentication. And that authentication is going to be mock Firebase auth. So there, now we have our auth class that we can use for all our tests. So here we want to call expect later, which is for anything with futures. And we're expecting the auth user class to return a stream, which we can check by emits in order and inside here we'll have the mock user so there we go now if we run it well you'll actually see a problem there so we were expecting an emit of the type mock user instead we got an instance of generated stream of just user so what happened here well, in Flutter, if you have two instances of an object, let's say you do this simple check. If you do mock user is equal to mock user, even though they are exactly the same, this will always return false. This is because a separate instance of mock user is not equal to a different instance. There are packages like Equatable and other ones I'm pretty sure that actually check the properties within that tell you whether they're equal or not. But since we're not using that, we have another option. You can create a variable for mock user and then use the same instance within this iterable and this emit check. So now if we save and run, everything passes. Great, so we got the emission there. Now we go back to this function and we need to check this first part, whether you create an account works. So you can copy paste that and check create account. So here the difference is we want to mock an actual call to the database. So we want to mock this create user with email and password. We're not trying to override it like we did here. We're trying to catch it and then return something of our own instead of the database. So you, you will need to do when and then inside basically do when the mock auth, mock firebase auth dot create user with email and password gets called with the fields we'll say tatus at gmail dot com and password one two three four five six so when that happens then answer and we put in whatever value we want it to answer with so actually in this case we don't really care what it answers. It will just return success no matter what the answer is. Unless it throws an exception, that's the only way it doesn't return success. And it will throw an exception if this wasn't successful, basically. So we mock it. We don't really care what the return is. And then we can do an expect where we await our auth class create account and we want if we don't pass anything that means these aren't going to get called to the specific fields that we mentioned here so we want to make sure we pass 
the email of Tadis at gmail.com and password of one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, since it gets called with those exact fields, it'll return with a success. Okay, let's try to run it. Perfect, it works. Now we could check the same thing except for this Firebase auth exception. Make sure the exceptions actually work. Create account exception. So when this function gets called, instead of returning null, let's actually throw a Firebase auth exception. And you can put your own message like you screwed up. And now we can actually copy this message and that should be our return for that function. Now we can run all three actually to check. All of them passed, perfect. Now I'm gonna copy paste these and we'll do for sign in. And we'll do sign in with email password, pass those in, sign in. That should run. Sign in exception. We do sign in with email password. Sign in function gets called, perfect. Now we should be able to run those. That one runs. This one runs. And then we could do the same thing with sign out. These don't need any calls. Let's check how this function works. So success if it's null. And same thing with exception, very easy, sign out. And there we go, now we can run all of these tests. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tests that all pass. Let's say Firebase gets updated or something and the sign out function works differently, our tests will not pass anymore. And now we have full coverage for all of our authentication functions. And let's say Firebase updates, they no longer throw a Firebase auth exception, they throw something else, then one of our tests is gonna fail when we run it because we only catch a Firebase auth exception. We don't catch the other ones. So our code is more safe and you'll be able to catch problems with anything you interface with and you'll know that it's not your app that's actually broken and it's something else. So that's it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you can't really have unit testing without mocking and hopefully I was able to explain it a little bit for you. This code will be on GitHub if you want to check it out and play with it. You can see how you can mess up the tests and stuff like that. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.